All right, get ready, because today we're taking a deep dive into the fascinating world of pulsating stars, those cosmic lighthouses we call type two Cephades, you know, specifically the BL Her subclass. You sent over this research paper, and let me tell you, it's not just equations and formulas. There's some seriously cool stuff here. Oh, absolutely. It's mind-blowing stuff. So imagine trying to make a map of the universe. Hmm. How do we even know how far away anything is out there? We can't exactly break out a tape measure for galaxies, right? Uh, yeah, no kidding. That's where our type 2 cephades come in. These stars are special. They pulsate, meaning they expand and contract, which changes how bright they appear from Earth. And get this, it's not random. They pulse like clockwork. It's true. They really do. And what's amazing is that there's a direct relationship between how long it takes for these stars to go through a full dimming and brightening cycle, their period, and how intrinsically bright they actually are. It's like a cosmic code. It's like the universe is speaking to us in Morse code. So by timing these pulses, we can unlock their true brightness. And once we know that, well, comparing it to how bright they appear to us here on Earth gives us a way to figure out just how far away they must be. It's like cosmic triangulation. And there are a couple of ways to do this, right? Exactly. There's this fascinating method called the bade wesselink technique, which is a big part of the research you sent over. Oh, yeah. I was getting to that. It's an older technique, right? That's right. What's fascinating here is that the bade wesselink technique has been around for ages. It's like classic astronomy. But this paper shows how it's still being refined even today. Mm -hmm. Talk about standing the test of time. I know, right? Think about We're talking about measuring the subtle changes in stars that are incredibly far away. The precision needed is mind-blowing. Oh, absolutely. It yeah. requires an incredible amount of precision and ingenuity to even attempt these kinds of measurements. Okay, so we've got these Beale Her stars, which are a type of type 2 Cephade. The research paper you shared dives into the bade westlink method using these stars. I have to admit, I was a bit lost in the weeds trying to fully grasp the method itself. It's seriously in-depth. Yeah, it can be tough to wrap your head around it all. Mm. Think of it like this. The paper is really focused on figuring out something called the projection factor for BL Her stars. Projection factor. Okay, this factor is crucial for making the bade westlink method as accurate as possible. Okay, that sounds a bit technical. What exactly is the projection factor, and why is it so important for measuring these stars? Well, you see, when astronomers measure a star's pulsation using its spectrum, they're analyzing how its light breaks down into different colors, right? This reveals how the star's surface is moving either towards or away from us. That movement is called radial velocity. Ah, so it's like that cosmic version of the Doppler effect, where the sound of a passing ambulance changes pitch as it moves. Precisely. But here's the thing, the radial velocity we measure is only a projection of the star's actual pulsation along our line of sight. It doesn't show us the full picture of how the star is truly expanding and contracting. Ah. Oh. That's where the projection factor comes in. It bridges the gap between the observed radial velocity and the star's actual pulsation, giving us a more accurate measurement. That makes sense. So how did the researchers in the paper go about figuring out this projection factor for BL Her stars, what kind of detective work was involved? It's quite an endeavor. They used a combination of data from powerful telescopes, like those at the Cerro Murphy Observatory, which, you know, used to be called the Cerro Armazones Observatory, oh, right. along with instruments from the European Southern Observatory. They were pulling out the big guns for this research. Wow, those are some serious astronomical tools. Oh, for sure. And they didn't just observe these stars in one way. They employed both photometry which measures the star's brightness in different colors, and spectroscopy, which analyzes the starlight to determine things like radial velocity. So they combine different techniques to get a more complete understanding of these stars. That's incredible. But you mentioned that they use something called the SBCR method. What is that and how does it fit into all of this? The SBCR method, or surface brightness color relation, is really quite clever. You see, a star's color can actually tell us a lot about its temperature. Hotter stars emit more blue light, while cooler stars appear redder. And there's a direct correlation between a star's surface brightness, its color, and its physical size. You mentioned surface brightness now. I know that's important. But could you remind me how it plays into all of this? Essentially, surface brightness tells us how bright a star appears over a specific area. It's like um, comparing the brightness of a single candle to the brightness of a 100 candles all grouped together. Mm. By analyzing the surface brightness, color, and knowing the distance to a star, 
which you know we can get from the period luminosity relation, astronomers can use the SBCR method to calculate the star's actual physical size. So it's like figuring out the size of a light bulb from how bright it seems and how far away it is? Exactly. And by combining this size information from the SBCR method with the radial velocity data, researchers can then solve for that crucial projection factor for each star. It's like piecing together a cosmic puzzle. That's fascinating. It sounds like the researchers were able to unlock some important information about Beale or her stars. Did they manage to pinpoint the projection factor? This is where it gets really interesting. Remember how we were talking about each star having its own pulsating fingerprint? Well, it turns out the projection factor isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of deal. They found that it actually varies from star to star. It really highlights how much more there is to learn about these stars. Wait, what? It's not constant. I thought we were looking for one magic number. Yeah, that's what makes this research so compelling. It really challenges some of our previous assumptions. The projection factors for the BL her stars in this study, they range from about 1.21 to 1.36. Okay, so those numbers. Help me understand what that difference actually means. Sure, yeah. You're right, it might not seem like a huge difference at first glance, but in astronomy, where precision is everything, even these small variations can have a big impact on our calculations. Makes sense. And the fact that it varies at all is a significant finding. It means that our understanding of how these stars pulsate is even more nuanced than we previously thought. So what does this mean for the bayed west length method? Do we have to start from scratch every time we want to measure the distance to a BL her star? Well, the good news is not at all. While they found that the projection factor varies, the researchers were able to determine a more accurate average projection factor mm. for these stars, 1.33. So we've got a more refined tool for the toolbox. Exactly. This refined projection factor will definitely help astronomers make even more precise distance measurements to BL her stars in the future. But that's not the only interesting discovery they made. Remember how we talked about the period luminosity relation, where a star's pulsation period gives us clues about its brightness? Right, right. Well, they also found a direct link between a BL her star's period and its actual physical size. It's what we call a period radius relation. Okay, so if I'm following you correctly, this means that just by observing how long it takes for one of these stars to go through a pulsation cycle, we can get a pretty good estimate of its actual size. You got it. It's like we have a cosmic ruler for BL her stars. This is blowing my mind. We've gone from twinkling stars to cosmic mile markers to now having a whole new set of tools to measure and understand the universe. It's incredible. But let's bring it back down to Earth for a second. Why does all this research on these specific stars matter in the grand scheme of things? What's the big takeaway for someone who's not, you know, an astronomer? Well, it's a good question. I think it's easy to get caught up in all the details, but the truth is understanding distances in space is fundamental to pretty much everything we do in astronomy. Imagine trying to understand a map without knowing the scale. It just wouldn't make sense. These distances are crucial for so many things. Studying how galaxies evolve over time, figuring out the age and size of the universe, even testing our understanding of fundamental physics like gravity and the nature of dark energy, it all ties back to these measurements. So even though this research focuses on a specific type of star, it has ripple effects throughout all of astronomy. It's like finding a missing piece of a giant cosmic puzzle. Absolutely. Yeah. And what's even more exciting is that this research was done by observing just a handful of BL or stars. Imagine the possibilities if we could study thousands more. That's incredible. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey into the world of pulsating stars. Until next time, keep looking up.